Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys week four tight end start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2020. I'm going to be talking about every single matchup from Thursday all the way until Monday and discuss whether I would start or sit every single tight end in every single given matchup. So before I start the video, I'd like to ask if you guys do end up enjoying this week four tight end start or sit decision video to make sure you hit that subscribe button because not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 fantasy football championship. As well as real quick, I'd like to give you guys a word from my friends and my sponsor over at OverlightDFS.com. OverlightDFS.com is my favorite place to play daily fantasy football. Now, why is that, Nick? It's because it is the easiest place to play and the simplest. All it is is one player versus another player, plus or minus the spread. Now, some games don't have a spread. Other games do have a spread. It's very simple. Which player scores more fantasy points, plus or minus the spread? For instance here, we have Ezekiel Elliott versus Nick Chubb. Who scores more fantasy points? Ezekiel Elliott minus three points or Nick Chubb plus three fantasy points? It's so simple that anyone can do it. It's so easy. You guys do all this research to win your week Lee matchups in fantasy football. So why not make some additional cash on OverlayDFS.com? Make sure you guys check that out. Link down below in the description. And we are back. Please make sure to check out Overlay DFS. So let's get right into it. Week four tight end start or sit decision. We begin here with tonight's game, the Thursday night football matchup between the Denver Broncos at the New York Football Jets. Now, in this game, I'm starting up Noah Fant. Now, I understand Brett Ripken is going to be the starting quarterback of the Denver Broncos, and we don't know too much about him, but what I do know is that the New York Football Jets have one of the worst fucking defenses I've ever seen with my eyes before, so I think Noah Fant should be able to have a good game, even with a worse off quarterback than Jeff Thick-Ass Driscoll. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, Blake Bortles, the boat, comes in halfway through the game and ends up playing, but at the end of the day, I think Noah Fant is definitely going to be a start this week, even with a a worse quarterback up against the Jets. I'm sitting down Chris Herndon. This Jets offense just seems atrocious, even with them having a real quarterback in Sam Darnold. Adam Gaze is just too much of an idiot. I expect this man to get fired after this game. I don't expect him to even make his way home because the Broncos are going to roll the New York football Jets tonight, in my opinion. And it's just sad for Adam Gaze being this shit of a coach and Chris Herndon really just has no chance to do anything because the game plan just never involves him getting the ball into his hands. Next game here we got the New Orleans Saints at the Detroit Lions. In this game I like both tight ends. Now TJ Hawkinson has been absolutely fucking atrocious the last couple of games. It really hasn't been good since that one breakout game he had last year but the New Orleans Saints are atrocious at guarding the tight end position. This could be a good matchup for him. So it really revolves around if Michael Thomas plays or not. I would say if Michael Thomas ends up playing, I would not start Jared Cook. But if he ends up missing, I would start Jared Cook in this matchup up against the Detroit Lions. Next game here, we got the LA Superchargers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I am going to be starting Hunter Henry in this game. Hunter Henry hasn't really put up that big of games as of recently. But I still do think he will have a solid game here up against the Bucs. For the Bucs, Rob Gronkowski is just not utilized enough to be worthy of a start in fantasy football this season. OJ Howard also, you just really have no idea who's going to be getting the ball in this offense. Sure, with Chris Godwin likely missing this game and maybe the next couple of weeks as well, Gronk and Howard could be very involved, but up against the Chargers defense, I would find it very hard to put either of those guys in my matchup considering they are both so game dependent. Like, it just seems like randomly one game Howard will score, then maybe Gronk will finally find the end zone one time this year. Next game here, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Cincinnati Bengals, and I like Drew Sample, even though his name sounds fake for the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow loves to throw the ball to the tight end position. Earlier in the season, it was C.J. Uzma who he was throwing the ball to, but then week two, C.J. Uzma ends up getting hurt, so now it's Drew Sample season, and Sample has looked good thus far in the sample size that we have seen thus far. Get it? Sample size. His name's Drew fucking Sample. That's hilarious. For the Jaguars, Tyler Eifert is a guy that I really don't like starting. I mean, on a weekly basis, he could end up finding the end zone, but that's all you're hoping for Tyler Eifert, considering he's not all that involved with Gardner Minshew when they're driving up the field. Next game here, we got the Minnesota Vikings versus the Houston Texans. In this game, I'm sitting down every single tight end in this game. Kyle Rudolph, Irv Smith just seem to be eating each other apart like some fucking parasites, making it impossible to figure out which one to start on a weekly basis, which to me means you don't start either of them. For the Texans, Jordan Atkins would be the guy to start if you had to start one. Up against the Vikings, I wouldn't be surprised if he played very good, but with that said, there's still like another 15 to 18 other guys that I would much rather start above Jordan Atkins, so that's why I got him here as a sit in this matchup. Next matchup here, we got my Miami Dolphins up against the Seattle Seahawks in Miami. In this game, I really do like Mike Gesicki. Now, I understand that 
Last week, Gasicki kind of did disappoint. Now, he ended up scoring a touchdown, but he just was not all that involved. Driving up the field because they were kind of just driving with ease with running the ball and dumping the ball off. In this game up against Seattle, I expect Mike Gasicki to have yet another pretty solid game here up against that Seattle defense. Mike Gasicki does look very potent in the red zone. Seems like Mike uh, Mike Gasicki loves to, or not Mike Gasicki, Ryan Fitzpatrick loves to look towards Mike Gasicki inside the red zone. I think Licky on Mike Gasicki uh, could have a big game here up against the Seattle Seahawks. For sit, I'm going to sit down. Seahawks tight end, third leg, Greg Olson. Greg Olson just seems like a touchdown player. They don't really look at him at all when driving up the field. So for me, that's definitely not going to be a guy I'm wanting to start based upon just hoping that he scores a touchdown on a weekly basis. Next game here, we got the Steelers at the Tennessee Titans. Now, we have no idea when this game is going to be played. As I'm recording this, the reports are that it may end up getting moved to later weeks. So with that said, make sure that you guys are prepared to move Janu or Eric Ebron out of your lineup. But as I'm recording this, I do not know there will probably be news within the next couple of hours on what's going to happen because they have to figure it out before the Thursday night football game. So I'm going to be starting up Janu Smith in this matchup if it happens. Janu Smith has been one of those late round tight ends that has just been really paying off dividends this season. Janu Smith seems like a lock to put up a pretty solid game here, even against the Steelers defense. That is very strong. I'm sitting down Eric Ebron. I understand that he ended up scoring last week, but that was after Deontay Johnson ended up getting hurt. Now reports seem like Deontay Johnson may be able to play on Sunday or Tuesday when this game is being played or Monday or week eight whenever this game is actually being played. Since Ebron was really only doing good after um, Mr. Deontay Johnson ended up getting hurt, it just seems like he's really dependent on one of the big wide receivers going down there to have a lot of production in that offense. Next game here, we got the Cleveland Browns at the Dallas Cowboys. In this game, I like Dalton Schultz in this game. The Cowboys just seem to be passing all over the yard every single fucking week, and Dalton Schultz, who you probably never heard of until this year, is has been balling the fuck out. And I expect him to take a nice dump on the Cleveland Browns, just like Odell Beckham's girl does right on his chest. I'm going to be sitting down Austin Hoop God Hooper because because he has been looking atrocious. Plain and simple, this guy has completely fucked you over if you drafted him highly, thinking he would be what he was in Atlanta. Now, I told you guys that was exactly what he's not going to be because the Cleveland Browns are going to run the ball a lot and they're not going to be throwing the ball to the tight end. But a lot of people, obviously, did not listen to me. Austin Hooper has been absolutely fucking atrocious thus far this year, and he's definitely a guy that I would sit and I probably wouldn't even want on my roster at this point. Next game here, we got the Arizona Cardinals at the Carolina Panthers. And in this game, there's just not enough. There's not even guys that are notable at the tight end position. Ian Thomas was a guy you could draft super late in your drafts and we're hoping that hey maybe Teddy Bridgewater would like to throw the ball to the tight end but he just does not like doing that at all so he's just really useless in fantasy football Dan Arnold get to the chopper the Dan Arnold Donator has not been playing that well at all the Cardinals just don't throw the ball to the tight end either so this is kind of a game where you just fade the tight end position as a whole. Next matchup here, we got the Indianapolis Colts at 9-inch Nick and the Chicago Bears. I like Jimmy Graham in this game. 9-inch Nick Foles loves to throw the ball to the tight end. That was very evident by how involved Jimmy Graham was in the red zone last week. Sure, the Colts do have a pretty good defense, but I wouldn't be surprised if Jimmy Graham had top 10 potential on this week for the Colts. Seems like Jack Doyle is going to come back, so Mo Alley Cox, that man who you just re- randomly found off the waiver wire, Mo Cox, Mo Problems, who was balling out the last two weeks, is just not going to be worthy of a start if Jack Doyle is going to be there to sucker away a lot of his targets. Again, if you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Next game here, we got the Washington football team up against the Baltimore Ravens in Washington. I'm going to be starting up Mark Andrews in this game. Now, I understand Mark Andrews has been atrocious the last two weeks. Mark Andrews has been looking like the green eggs and ham you could get in elementary school on Dr. Seuss Day. That's how fucking bad Mark Andrews has looked. He has not been good, except for week number one where he balled the fuck out. But I expect a humongous bounce back game from Andrews and Lamar Jackson this week after they really disappointed last week up against the Kansas City Chiefs. This matchup up against the Washington football team should be a very easy one, especially with Chase Young likely missing this game as well as next week as well. I'm going to be sitting down Logan Thomas. He's more of a deeper league kind of a start where you've got to hope he scores up against the Ravens, but I expect the Ravens defense to look excellent, look A1 like the steak sauce this week up against the Washington football football team. Next matchup here, we got the New York football giants at the LA Rams. In this one, I like Tyler Higby. Should be pretty obvious though, because Tyler Higby is a start every single week. And the Giants defense just looks so bad, it's not even funny. Like, they're actually so shit that the Rams and Tyler Higbee should be able to easily have a big game here up against the New York football Giants. I'm sitting down Evan Ingram. How many times can this man fuck you in the ass before you say no, no, no? 
No, no, no. Dikembe, no, 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 to Evan Ingram. I'm not starting him here. The Rams defense does look very good, and Evan Ingram has looked like absolute shit, so pretty easy decision there for me. Next one here, we got the New England Deflatriots at the Kansas City Chiefs. In this one, as you may have guessed, you're going to be starting Travis Kelsey. Even against the Patriots, Travis Kelsey is a must-start on every single week. Bill Belichick is smart enough to figure out how to sit one of these guys down and kind of limit them, but it's very hard to limit an offense when they have, like, seven different guys who are fucking electric on the Chiefs' offense. So with that said, I still think Travis Kelsey is going to have a big game. And big man Ryan Izzo is not going to be a start because he has not been a start all season, and I don't expect that to start up against the Chiefs. Next game here, we got the Buffalo Bills at the Las Vegas Earth. Raiders. Now, I think Darren Waller may end up not putting up a humongous game here due to the fact that the Bills should be able to limit Darren Waller, kind of like we saw the Patriots do last week. But at the end of the day, I think Darren Waller will have a much better matchup than he did last week up against the New England Patriots. Last week, the Bills saw an emergence of Tyler Croft, the Tomb Raider, in that game. He was fucking scoring a zillion touchdowns. Dawson Knox was not really all that involved. Now, Dawson Knox is technically the starting tight end on the team, but he would not be a start for me this week up against the Raiders. Next one here, we got the Sunday Night Special between the Philadelphia Eagles at the San Francisco 49ers, and this one sounds like a snooze fest, but they do have two great tight ends in this game. Now, Godert would have been a start had he have been healthy, but Dallas Godert ended up getting hurt, going to miss some serious time, according to Doug Peterson. So, Zach Ertz is a must-start in this game. Their wide receiver core is deceased. This is what we saw halfway through last season after all the wide receivers got hurt of the Philadelphia Eagles. Zach Ertz started to look like a top-three tight end in fantasy football again, and I believe he could be that this week up against the Niners. George Kittle, if he ends up playing, will be a start. Seems like he may end up getting the go this week. If not, you're not going to want to start any of the tight ends there since Jordan Reed got hurt, and there's no one else really behind him. That is very notable. And final game here, the Monday Night Special between the Atlanta Falcons at the Green Bay Packers. Now, a lot of people are getting pissed off at Hayden Hurst, but he has scored two weeks in a row, and I think up against the Green Bay Packers, there's definitely potential for that again. Without Julio Jones likely missing in this spot, I think Hayden Hurst could have a humongous game. Up against the Packers, both of these teams are going to be putting up big point totals in this game, so I think Hayden Hurst is going to be able to play quite solid here on Monday night. Robert Tanyan, there's a bunch of other tight ends, Jay Sternberger on the Packers, and I feel like on a weekly basis, it may just be a different guy, so I have re no real confidence in starting any tight ends on the Green Bay Packers. Packers. So with that said, thank you guys all for watching this video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below because yet again, it is free. And I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 Fantasy Football Championship. Come back later for another video as well as a live stream later tonight. So have a great rest of your guys' day. I love you all. Check out OverlayDFS.com. Have a great rest of your guys' day. Good boy!